just check, waiting for sound. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting of the Town Council of Monday, May 1st, 2017. Mike Hurley, if you could lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dolores. Councilor Bellow. Here. Councilor Hamilton. Here. Councilor Hurley. Here. Councilor Latino is not here. Councilor Martino? Here. Councilor Rao? Here. Councilor Spinello? Here. Deputy Mayor Barry? Here. Mayor Montaneri? Here. Thank, Thank you, you, Dolores. Um, my first order is a proclamation for National Bike Month. I think there's some folks here for that. So if you guys come up front here, I'm going to read this. Let's see you guys. Hello. How are you? Hello. 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 Tom Brown. Hey, Tom. You guys are also concerned about the airport and air quality. Yeah, we're everything. <laughs> That's great. Okay, good. Thank you. Welcome for uh, coming to the chambers for this. It's nice to uh, have you here. I'd like to read this proclamation, whereas for more than a century, the bicycle has been an important part of the lives of most Americans. And today, millions of Americans engage in bicycling as an environmentally sound form of transportation, an excellent form of fitness and quality family recreation. The education of cyclists and motorists as to the proper and safe operation of bicycles is so important to ensure safety and the comfort of all users. The League of American Bicyclists and Independent Cyclists throughout our state are promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety operation and education in an effort to reduce accidents, injuries, and fatalities. The town of Wethersfield, through groups like Bike Walk, Wethersfield, Safe Routes to Schools, Central Connecticut Health District, and others are striving to make our community more bicycle and pedestrian friendly. So therefore, on behalf of the Town Council, I, Paul Montaneri, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, do hereby deem the month of May 2017 as National Bike Month, as recognized by the League of American Bicyclists, and uh, put the town seal and fix my hand. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much thank for being here. Thank you. you guys would like to say a few words? Or you're good? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you very much for uh, recognizing uh, bicycling and pedestrians as part of the community. Uh, it's one of the things that makes our town great. You know, it's just a beautiful place to go riding. Um, we do have a bicycle festival on June 11th, uh, and we invite everybody to go to that. That's at Hamner uh, on Sunday in the morning. And um, I'm going to pass it on. Uh, that was pretty good. Um, uh, we've been working closely with Ann Hartman from the, the uh, health district, so we, we recognize her involvement, and we're looking very much forward to uh, working with the town in the future for future improvements. Well, glad, glad you're here. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for being here this evening, too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move into uh, public comment. Anyone here this evening to speak publicly about any topic of interest? Gus? Good evening, uh, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. How are you doing tonight? Summer is here, huh? Uh, the stop sign again. This is not going to go away. Three weeks ago, I did go to the engineering department and I asked for uh, any letters that, uh, for a permission to install the two stop signs on Main Street and, and, and Church and Marshall, I guess. That was done a couple of years ago. On number, on number of occasions, the mayor has told me more than once, I guess, that basically it's not up to them to put a, uh, a stop sign and everything depends on the state. Uh, okay, I guess it depends on the state. But when I went to the engineering department, they spent some time, there is no record at all for them to get a permit, a permit from the state, nor as uh, as the Wethersfield Police Department said that a stop sign shall not be installed on the major street unless justified by a traffic engineering study. So I did ask for the engineering study. There was none, or at least uh, they couldn't find it. There were, this was about three or four weeks ago. I went back again this morning, and as soon as the gentleman saw me, he says, oh, I'm sorry, but I did not have the time to look into it. In the meantime, though, I also called 
the, the consultant, the engineer, and I asked, says, you have installed two stop signs on Main Street that were not there. Did you ever do a, a, a traffic engineering study? No, not, not that we are aware of and everything else. So what is going on? A street like Main Street, you put two stop signs, we're not even thinking about it at all, the effect to the traffic. And a small little street like Morrison Avenue that needs a stop sign, that I prove it to you, that needs a stop sign based on the intersectional side distance and the speed, the 85th percentile, which it doesn't really meet standards right now, between Tifton and Morrison Avenue. And yet, nobody cares about it. And by the way, it does not meet standards because of what the town has done relocating the road, because the way it was before, Tifton and Morrison Avenue, there was nothing wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. Other public comment? Bob Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I know we're narrowing in on the budget. I don't know what happened today. I know uh, last Friday they spoke, or you know, I think it was last Friday, about the, um, the shortfall in tax return revenues. It came out late, uh, they first spoke about $200, 000, $200 million short, then it came out to 400 and some million short. I don't know what they said today, because it was supposed to come out officially. I think uh, that hopefully we'll hear from you folks on that. Um, I know we have talked to you about various funds that the town has that I believe if we need to cut, these are places to cut. They're losers. They're losers to the town. And talk about losers at our last meeting. There was a number of people that got up here and supported various sports in this town. Sports that you folks constantly pander, constantly fund. And I'd just like to quote a few sentences here and there from that, different, from that discussion of last year. One was, so much has been spent on other sports, and we should spend on lacrosse. If taxes go up, then I'm all for it if it's for the children. Lacrosse team is not much of, a, of an investment. Wonderful sport, wants more lacrosse. We support swim and lacrosse. It's all about the future. Lacrosse brings together many people who would never meet. And I found that very interesting. And another one was the sports brings together new friends and gets us to new great places. There's a lot more. If that's all these people have to want sports, I don't know how in the world you, you support that, Mayor. We have, if these guys, who they were mostly guys that got up here and spoke, young men, if they're that lonesome, if they need, need companionship, they want to travel and go places, they have a thing called the U.S. Army. They could all join up and they could become great soldiers and go see places that none of us, well, none of us, many of us will never see. And they could have the greatest friends in the world. Just go. Not a word about the, the seniors in this town, not one of these people spoke in any kind of respect to these old people who pay their taxes and use very little services. And I would hope that you folks would finally open your eyes and realize that you're only serving a minority by pushing all of this sports, all of this money to this minority group in town. Go look at those funds. Go look at the football fund and see how much revenue came in over the last 
14 years from Catone Field. It's pathetic, Mayor. Someone mentioned about an investment in sports. This sports is throwing your money to the wind. And we need to spend our money on our highways. 100% or 98% of our citizens use the highways. And we only spend a million or some kind of number like that. And if we do, do any cutting today or next week or the week after for the budget, those will be areas that will get cut. And you'll keep funding sports. I don't understand why. And now you want to buy new turf. You want to finance it. Because the folks who are in charge did such a poor job of collecting money, putting it on the side, when, the old turf, when that existing turf that was financed by the citizens originally now needs to be replaced. You have no money. You have to now go out and borrow. And I call that, and I spoke about that last time, this is like chapter seven of the bankruptcy code, if that was an organization. And what we do see in those funds are dollars that, are, that the town also provides to those fields that are not included. And we're not even thinking about those dollars. It is nothing but a big sucking sound by providing all of this sports, which doesn't amount to much, Mayor, but you love it. Every one of you vote for it. And you like it. And, but I'd like to add, in looking at your budget book, if you're going to go out and buy new turf and finance it, why in the world are you not taking money from these funds, that, these special funds that we have? Special funds like park program, recreation program, social and youth program. They've got a lot of money sitting in them. Utilize that $1 million to pay for those. Because you can do it. Any family who has an expenditure coming up is going to look into all of their bank accounts if they have any. These are bank accounts, in a sense. And you should drain them, especially anything that's regarding sports and, 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 and recreation. These are the people that use these services. And also, you should put clamps on the collection of this money and the recording of this money. I don't think you have it down right. You have, you have, ga you have games that don't even show money. Yet yeah, you've got expenses up the yin yang. And this is costing every taxpayer in town. Whether they like it or not, they're going to have to pay for it or subsidize it. And I would think that with this situation we're in today, and I know Tom, I don't know if Tom's here. Yeah, Tom's here tonight. He read a paragraph in here from your budget book, which I agree with him. You know, you say you want to hear from everybody. That's nonsense. Yeah, you hear from them in one ear, out the other, and you do whatever in the world you want. Thank you, Bob. Hey, uh, I appreciate coming up here, Mayor, you I'm, know? I'm, Come I'm up no. here to talk to you once in a great while. Do you know what that number is uh, from the state of Connecticut uh, as to what your deficit is? I did hear it was a little worse today. I didn't get an exact number, yes. It was a little worse. I hope we hear some plans that you have, Mayor. Thank you, Bob. You know? We, it's folks like you, this council, that has put us in this kind of problem. We have idiots at the state level. Absolute idiots. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up front, yeah. How are you? Hi, I'm Casey White, 91 Center Street. Um, I want to make a quick comment about the budget, and I want to start by thanking all of you for being here, because I know this is not a financially profitable <laughs> thing for you to be doing for yourselves, and I know that you give up a lot to do this for all of us. Um, I want to talk about the library for a minute, and I really would love to see the library budget, budget pass, pass as it is. I know it's a 
just over $400 over the last year's budget, last I heard. Um, and I would love to see that stay as it is and not go any lower. Uh, the library is, uh, overall, I mean, in, in the United States, it's an iconic institution for people to use. That everyone, People know that anyone is welcome to go there. Um, I know it was one of the first town services I used when I moved here uh, four and a half years ago from Massachusetts. Um, my daughter, I dropped her off there with my husband as I walked in today. Um, and not only people with small children, but people of all ages I see at the library. I see parents who are burned out with toddlers um, in a safe space where they can play when it's disgusting outside with the weather. I see people of all ages on the computers. I see children after school there. Um, and there are lots of resources for people who can't make it to the library physically for whatever reason. And um, I just, I trust our library and our library board. The libraries don't, um, they don't have a ton of money in general that they're using. They stretch their budget pretty thin already. Um, I have personally felt some of the effects of the state budget cuts with the libraries. I love to check out in our library loan books because lots of times our library doesn't have as much as other libraries in the state do and they have limited the number of interlibrary loan um, borrowing you can get from other libraries because the state has cut the funding for that program. And you know, that's not a huge hardship for me personally, but those things layered on top of each other will have an impact on people, especially people who don't have maybe as many resources as I have personally. Um, so that's, that's mostly it for the library. I just think it's something that we need to really protect um, as a public place that's safe and something that um, really defines our values as a town. And also, just to also put in a good word for the school budget, um, the gentleman was complaining about how children's programs don't bring in revenue. Uh, children don't bring in revenue, that's true. <laughs> so that's just how life is. But um, if our schools suffer from too many cuts, then our property values suffer, and then it does affect everybody in town. So thank you, and again, thank you for um, being here and serving all of us. Thank you, Casey. Tom? Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, <clears throat> 600 Walker Hill Road. I just wanted to share with you an observation that I made at the uh, budget hearing on the 17th. At the beginning of the evening, Mr. Emmett presented a PowerPoint presentation summarizing the key points of his proposed $58 million budget. If you recall, there were three slides outlined requests not included in the budget. Towards the bottom of uh, slide 10, there was a line item that stated 50 k for WHS lacrosse full program is not included in uh, the items in the budget. We then heard from about 15 speakers that uh, spoke in favor of the uh, lacrosse program and the benefits and importance of having that high school program in place. One speaker in particular made a statement that caught my attention. This individual was in favor of having a lacrosse program and strongly supported the approval of the Board of Education 2.94% spending increase, and also stated that he and others had been urged by the superintendent to attend the budget hearing and speak in support of his 2.94% budget. And then, and that if the town council approved the Board of Education budget, he, Mr. Emmett, would then have some flexibility to fund the lacrosse program. Uh, to me, that would support my theory that the Board of Ed budget proposal document is just all fiction. It's a bunch of overinflated line items that once approved by this council, they, the Board of Education, can spend that $58 million however they choose without any town oversight. In other words, it's flexible. I don't believe that's the case with the town budget. I think uh, you put a budget in place and you adhere to that budget. And yeah, occasionally there are transfers between line items at the end of the year with, to cover shortfalls. But for the most part, you follow the budget that you make. Uh, selling us a bill of goods is not the way to go. So again, I urge you to consider funding the Board of Ed budget at the state mandated minimum 
Also keep in mind that this education funding in Wethersfield is more than the 58 or 56 million dollars that uh, that we're talking about. It includes the debt service for the high school, I think 725,000. Uh, it includes all of the maintenance for the fields and uh, facilities that the town employees maintain. They cut the lawns, they do the lines, and, and so on. And it, now we're also talking about a million or a million and a half dollars to replace the synthetic uh, turf on the high school field. So it's more than 56 or 58 million dollars. It's much more. So please consider that when you finalize your budget in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Other public comment? No, seeing no other. Thank you. Council reports this evening? Any council reports? Don? Um, I was able to attend the Arbor Day ceremony Saturday at the Broad Street Green. There was a terrific turnout. Um, the fourth graders read their poems and haikus and um, short essays and did a phenomenal job as they usually do. Um, they helped to plant the tree and there was also an award plaque that was um, put onto the Broad Street Green in memory of um, Thayer Chase. So it was a very nice ceremony, lots of kids. Um, it was a great turnout, it was nice to see. It was a beautiful day. Thank you, Donna, for making that. Mike? Uh, I, along with Town Manager Jeff Bridges, attended the um, Hartford Brainerd Airport Noise Advisory Committee. Um, we meet quarterly to go over the uh, flights that um, go over all of Wethersfield. You know, some people say it's just old Wethersfield, but uh, you do hear from uh, people who live on the west side that planes come in too low. Um, the good news is the airport uh, authority is um, talking to pilots more often now. Um, they're hearing the complaints come in from residents about the noise level, and uh, they are going to start setting up uh, patterns for which airplanes must um, first mark off before they begin their approach, and one in particular is the Putnam Bridge going over to Glastonbury so that they can start the... Um, descent into Brainerd as uh, as far back as that bridge over the river, continue the river, and then come into the uh, airport. Hopefully that will um, clear up some of the um, confusion with the pilots when they uh, come in and don't fly over Old Weathersfield. Um, and that's about it from that. Mike, do you want to share anything about the meeting, the public uh, hearing on the same topic? Yeah, yeah, I can do that as well. That'd be um, great. Um, I think... Uh, Tony, Amy, um, Mayor, myself, uh, Mike, you were there as well, uh, came to the meeting where um, the CAA, Connecticut Airport Authority, presented their plan for about 30, now 30 acres of um, tree clearing just uh, south of the runway at Brainerd. There are a couple other areas as well, but the majority of the project affects uh, residents in Wethersfield. Uh, it's a scaled back proposal from what originally was proposed. Uh, I believe 40 acres was the original proposal. They had three uh, options at the time. Uh, this was back in January. To do nothing at all was one. The FAA does not recommend that, obviously, for pilot and for um, resident safety. That is a, um, an option that cannot be um, you know, com completed. Uh, the second option was to clear cut the 40 acres and um, just leave the undergrowth. Uh, there is a lot of concern with that. And then the third and final option, which you know we worked together on, um, making sure that the, uh, the CAA would approve it, is a um, selective tree trimming program where they would go in and take some of the old growth. And again, it's not old growth as in you know 100-year-old trees. I think. The last time they did this was about 35 some odd years ago. Um, the, uh, the old growth trees that are too high, um, there's concern that uh, if they limb them or trim them too high up, um, they take out 25% of the tree, it would just kill the tree. Um, so they would selectively you know, cut the trees that uh, they want to uh, um, take care of. 
and for some of the other um, smaller trees they would leave because you know the approach coming in would be on not so steep of an angle that they could actually clear them um, and pilot safety and, and resident safety um, is of uh, concern at least in my you know uh, understanding of the project um, I don't want to see all 40 acres or 30 acres now cut down completely I think selective tree trimming would be the correct option for that um, we do have nesting bald eagles blue herons a number of other wildlife um, they are cognizant CAA is cognizant of uh, of those and the uh, the impact on wildlife um, but there are two proposals that were discussed one being um, having somebody from the town be a monitor of this project and uh, I think we would probably want to discuss that uh, I like the idea of you know having a town resident either be Corey from you know the tree warden or somebody from you know one of the conservation commissions or even you know talk about appointing somebody who may be interested from the public um, I know I see a couple people who were here that night so uh, I know there's a couple of people who may want to volunteer for that position um, I, I like that idea uh, to monitor what is actually happening um, and you know follow have CAA follow the the requirements placed on them by you know Hartford Glassberry and and Weathersfield the other proposal was to plant replant a tree for every tree taken down that's something I think Hartford has in their charter or in, in their um, um, clean air uh, requirements I don't know if we can do that exactly but you know maybe we can look into um, some type of program where we could get uh, um, low slow growth trees replacing some of those that have been taken down uh, again minimal impact trying to limit the impact on on the area on the river on the embankment on the wildlife as well as keep the safety of you know every pilot and his or her passengers as well as residents um, in mind when we do this um, all too often it seems now we're reading about airplane you know crashes be it in East Windsor Tweed uh, unfortunately East Hartford some of them are uh, you know pilot error but some of them also are um, you know coming in an approach and uh, you know just like in Meriden clipping trees um, on takeoff uh, so those are some of the uh, the concerns that were raised um, and hopefully we can uh, work with the public the CAA and the surrounding towns to have a uh, you know, limited impact in that area. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Other council reports this evening? Tony? Uh, there was a, a couple of meetings on EDIC since um, we last met beginning of the month uh, because I couldn't report because of the budget hearing last time. But uh, the EDIC has been working on an initiative to set up a, a website called The Great Elm with branches offices so people can turn around and go and find whatever information they need on any subject pertaining to the town and they're moving forward on that. They're not duplicating what other people are doing. They're coming up with something that will feed over to the other websites to draw the information from them so people have a one source to go to to be able to find out anything on that. Uh, the town planner gave us an update on uh, all the various uh, empty prop properties in town and one that was uh, a, a great concern to people lately has been the status on the fund zone and he informed us that uh, they did uh, <coughs> go before inland wetlands and passed against them and went before design review and passed before them and their next thing is they're on the agenda to go to planning and zoning uh, this week uh, he also advised us that uh, 207 Church Street Leclerc's auction is in the process of submitting plans to planning and zoning for approval on that property. Uh, the Senior Citizens Advisory Commission met on and having on May 11th. Uh, they have an annual function, everything geared towards something, and this year's theme is spring cleaning. It'll be held at the Pitkin Center uh, on May 11th from 1 to 3. At that, they will be collecting used books, which they'll turn over to the library for sale. Uh, somebody will be there from the Lions Club to collect used glasses for recycling, old hearing aids. Uh, police department will be there to uh, collect unused and outdated medications. 
and uh, Dolores has arranged for uh, a shredder to be there to take documents from people uh, uh, that they need shredded. Uh, they will also have speakers there that day to talk about recycling and how to get rid of uh, electronics, including old cell phones, digital cameras, answer machines, consider, uh, computers, etc. They'll talk about the hazardous days, uh, waste days and how you get rid of batteries, light bulbs, cleaning solutions, pesticides, and more in paint. Uh, it's free admission to that. Uh, they will have refreshments and door prize that day, and it's being sponsored by the Cedar Sense Advisory Committee. Uh, public Works met, and we reviewed the bids for art artificial turf that uh, the consultant came up with and gave him, to, okay, gave him the okay to move forward with those bid to get quotes that will come back to us for review afterwards. Uh, they also told us about, uh, we also got word about the problems with the uh, condition of the roof at Stillman. Uh, the slate roof is uh, beyond repair, so uh, we're developing bid specs on that to uh, move forward to see what we can do with that. Uh, also want to commend the Police on the recent uh, promotion pinnings for Lieutenant Mike Connolly, Sergeants Tony Gonzalez and Anthony uh, DeMonte, uh, three well-deserving airmen, and uh, uh, it, was, it was a good function that day. Uh, CCHD had a volunteer recognition uh, program in Rocky Hill to recognize all the volunteers within C uh, C Connecticut Health District uh, who helped out put with both the flu clinic and emergency management, and it was uh, Nice to meet with some of those people there. And recently, last week, we had a ribbon cutting with a new dental group that moved into uh, 55 Town Line. Uh, and a um, young lady there who's opening up a practice and uh, is looking forward to serve the people of Wethersfield. Uh, she grew up in the state, was educated in the state, and wants to serve the state. So uh, uh, it was a real nice uh, ribbon cutting. All right, thank you. Um, I did uh, attend the building committee meeting for the high school last Monday. Obviously, the project is winding down. Um, punch list items are, are continuing. I think they're down to 18 after catching up a little bit over the April break. Uh, commissioning issues, too, with regard to the systems. They're still having problems with one of the units um, uh, with the heating and the cooling. I think I mentioned that at one of our last meetings. Um, and so they're still looking into that. What, to determine the source of the problem and, and see how that can be corrected. Um, uh, essentially, it was Unit 3, which is near the library. Um, the, uh, there was a clog in one of the, or the drain in one of the showers in the locker rooms. Uh, that has been corrected um, as part of the punch list process. We're going to have the screening of the, uh, the units, the roof units. Uh, it's on the agenda tonight, but that was approved uh, uh, unanimously uh, uh, as well. Um, uh, and uh, the sound baffles in the pool are, are going to be uh, put in, in this summer. I think they'll be done by the end of July. So those had not been done uh, earlier because of the, uh, the activity in the school and, uh, and swim team, both fall and, uh, and, and winter time. But th that'll be done this summer. And uh, on the financial side, uh, even with uh, assuming we approve the uh, the full screening, uh, there will be uh, approximately $160,000 uh, in the contingency. Uh, I believe that was the number. Uh, so, and that's it. Project, obviously nearing completion, but uh, we're moving, probably this summer. Mm -hmm. It'll be fully complete is probably the best guess. Thank you, Deputy. Jody? I just wanted to report on the Persons with Disabilities meeting that we recently had. Um, there was a lot of conversation around um, just visiting some of the various group homes around town. Um, Weathersfield Housing Authority site manager had reported that a lot of the folks are taking advantage of the senior center trips that we offer, which is really good news. Um, with regard to seniors, um, there was question over um, the farmer's market at Solomon Wells House and the property being uneven, so they were going to reach out to Derek and just to talk to Public Works um, about you know, helping out with some of the, the walkways because the seniors and some of the folks that have disabilities are, are not able to get there because of that. Um, with Parks and Recreation, um, they reported about Special Olympics athletes who have participated in the Winter Games this past March. 
uh, both unified snowshoeing and floor hockey. We received 26 medals and four ribbons, which is really a tremendous uh, accomplishment. Um, and currently the athletes are training and they're going to um, also be talking about some new young uh, youth athletes and unified partners as well as adult a athletes from a group home here in town um, that will be participating in track and field training. And one of the gold medalists, female alternate shot unified athletes, um, was selected to attend the World Games in Seattle, and that will happen next July. So that was really interesting and fun news to hear. Um, and with regard to transportation, obviously um, we approved the curtain contract. So they were just talking about ongoing communication back and forth to make sure that that's a suitable um, enterprise and that folks are getting what they need out of that. Um, and the next meeting will be May 17th. Thank you, Jody. <clears throat> Amy? The pension committee met this evening. Um, the forecast is looking good with modest growth, and the pension is currently just shy of $90 million. It's up 5.5% for this quarter. Um, and also budget and finance committee met last week with the Board of Ed um, to start reviewing the Board of Ed's budget, and we're going to continue the discussions with them. Thank you, Amy. Anthony? Anthony? Youth Advisory Board is going to have a, a fundraiser this Thursday at 6 o'clock at uh, Wooden Tap in Newington for the camp fund. Uh, the tickets are $30 and all the proceeds go to the Weathersfield Camp Fund. That's what time, Anthony? 6 o'clock. Thank you. Any council comments? See you, Donna. Um, we received uh, the person, the counselors serving on the Parade Committee, the Memorial Day Parade Committee received an email today from Sal Kucha about the passing of Larry Spellacy. Um, that's a big loss for the community. Larry has been um, so integral in the parade and its existence for so many years, knowing it like the back of his hand, mm -hmm. and um, we're going to miss having his presence. Um, services will be Thursday with the wake on Wednesday evening from 3 to 7, I believe, is what the arrangement said. The other um, thing is I did send out to a couple people, but wanted to let you know May 6th, Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning, Cedar Hill Cemetery is doing a tour, and it's called Weathersfield Notables. It's... Um, talking about the personages who now reside at Cedar Hall, like the wealthy seedsman Silas Robbins, Civil War Chaplain John Morris, Tuskegee Airman Lemuel Custis, and Connecticut State Prison Warden William Willard. Um, it begins at the flagpole at the end of the drive. Um, as you go through the gates, there's a small admission fee of $5 for non-members, and the Cedar Hill um, Foundation members um, are free. Their tours are really interesting, and this should be interesting to hear about all of those Weathersfield um, notables. Amy? Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, in regard to the Brainerd Airport, I was wondering who you would call about noise complaints in low-flying planes? There's a standard number. I can get that out to the council members, but it's a published number that's actually for noise issues. And so are they keeping track? Yes, every quarter we get a report, how many people called, uh, what planes they called about, what time of day, address to the caller, all those. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good to know. Um, and then the other thing was about the auction house property. Is, is that um, still before planning and zoning? I had heard that that proposal had been pulled. I heard that it's not moving forward as it was proposed. Okay, but it is still on planning and zoning's agenda for No, this I think week? they pulled it for this week. Oh, they pulled it for this week. Okay. Thank you. It's my understanding. I'll check. No, I, I heard the same thing. I think it was in response to some concerns from neighbors about the height and okay. application. But I, I just wasn't sure if it was going to be this week or not. No, I think it got pulled. Okay, thank you. Mike? No, just to answer Amy's question, there is a Brainerd Airport noise. Um, it's not a toll-free number. It's an 860 number, 860-566-2895. Thank you. Oh, I forgot. 
I was just going to make a quick comment on, on some earlier comments. There were some negative um, comments made about uh, some of the younger speakers who came to our last meeting, and I think um, it's important to at least recognize or comment that it is not an easy thing for people from the public to come up and talk. And when someone from a high school sporting team or any of our younger residents wish to speak, I think they should be commended rather than criticized. So um, I, I just wanted to say that. And I listen to everyone, um, young and old, um, and I think we all do. But I don't think um, it's fair to, to, to pick on the youngest of our residents. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. OK. Uh, Jeff, anything? No, thank you, Mr. Right. Laura, is there anything? You know, Tony's already talked about the uh, shred event. Okay. Very good. We'll move on to council action. Uh, I think we have one uh, appointment from Councilor Martino and one from Councilor Hurley. We'll start with Mr. Hurley. <coughs> Starting with me? Yes. Okay. Uh, appointment to the Transit District, Greater Hartford. To correct term ending, Peter Gardeau. 60 Griswold Road, 718-2016 to 1230-2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Tony? Uh, we have an appointment to the <coughs> Hartford Brainerd Noise Advisory Committee to re represent the Chamber of Commerce. That will be Cynthia Greenblatt of 35 Broad Street for a term from 5117 to 6-30-21. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. No abstentions or objections. Uh, we'll, we have no unfinished business uh, or other business. We'll move to 4A. We have a bid this evening on the white high school screen that uh, Deputy Mayor spoke about, and I think you'll introduce it. Uh, motion to approve PCO number 950 for $220,897.11 to purchase and install rooftop screens. Um, uh, for Weathersfield High School. Second. Motion and second. I know uh, Sally's probably here, but you're going to take us through it, Jeff? Uh, I'll, I'll start it off, and then and, if there's and more Christine questions. And Christine and Rusty. Um, what you see in your packet is the same presentation that appeared before the Planning and Zoning Commission at which the plan was approved for the rooftop screening, which is an L that will traverse the entire front of the building front meeting as you look, as you drive onto the site from Wilkett Hill Road. The entire uh, front of that uh, building will be uh, screened along with the portion on the, uh, the side. So $220,000, um, the landscaping, that, which was also part of the planning and zoning approval, is not part of this proposal. We'll come back uh, this summer, probably for fall planting, to finish that up. But uh, Rusty, the architect, is here to answer any questions regarding the particulars of the screen and uh, the chair is here to talk about anything that happened at the committee and Sally's here to answer any other questions. Very good. Um, I know the uh, council got uh, the packet which included visual depictions of the treatment proposal uh, as well as the cost analysis and the reports from the architect and the individual line items. Everybody's here for specific questions on it. I know we have had several meetings where we've discussed it so I'm going to leave it open to council for questions and identify who you may wish to have answer. So, Jeff. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Proxy. Um, this big. Well, no, the landscaping isn't part of this so that would come out of the contingency that's left over or yes. is that put aside? Uh, it's so it's still not 160 the, contingency left? There's still more to do with that? There's still more to do but the, the landscaping amount is $20,000 okay. roughly. Yeah. Yeah. And is the color of the, it's probably for somebody up there, is the color of this screening going to be exactly how it's depicted here? Yes, the color of the screens will match the metal panels that are on the building. Okay. Is that good or bad one? Is that good? Yeah, I'd like it to match. Okay, that's good. <laughs> good call by you. Sure. Jody? Um, I just wanted to know, how many screens is this getting us? Actually, it's one continuous screen. They're, they come in sections, but it's one continuous screen that's approximately 363 feet long. It's all, all along the east side of the building, and then it turns uh, along the south side of the building. There are three larger 
uh, rooftop units that they're specifically screening in this in, in this particular configuration. So more toward the front of the building um, along Wolcott. Right, right. So the entire the length where it's coming along, which is the east side, the, uh, as you come down Wolcott Hill uh, and down the main entrance, that entire facade will be screened. And the back side we're not concerned with, right? No, those have been painted to match the, the color of the panels because they're much lower in profile. Yeah. Um, so it was deemed that, hey, that we didn't really need to screen those. And the sight lines from those particular, for those other units are, you know, the, the grade drops off. So it's not, you're looking from, from a lower elevation. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Wilka Hill, it's, it's so much higher. So your sight lines are really, in, in some cases, almost right at the units themselves. After these are installed, is there anything we have to do to maintain them, keep them up, replace them? There will be. I mean, these are uh, aluminum screens. They're insulated panels. Um, just like the panels, they they would you know, over time will need some some maintenance. Uh, the the finish on the on the the metal is is a Kynar finish, which has a, a fifteen year you know minimum warranty on it and and what happens is in time if something uh, it's damaged by a let's say a storm or something then you'll have to do some uh, level of maintenance on them but overall we anticipate fairly minimal maintenance uh, the, the connection points will be checked every now and then uh, just to make sure uh, that because of you know especially if there's a, a storm and there's high winds you want to come back and you go up there and make sure there's no uh, effect from those but there, there'll be no different than you know any maintenance that you would that most rooftop screens would would take is this something that we can do in-house or is that something we have to vend out for the installation or you mean the maintenance on the maintenance. it um, is you know some what we anticipate is if there's any maintenance if it's if it's damaged then you will need to to get the vendor that installs the units to come up and replace them they are easily replaceable it's not a uh, a complicated process, but usually you want the manufacturer's installer to install it so that you maintain any kind of warranty. Thank you. Don? Just uh, that brought up a question. Um, with Tremco that we use for the roof um, maintenance and oversight, would they be able to add this to their list just to check? when they're up there doing the inspection on the roof, is that something that would be appropriate? Yes, in fact, Tremco was part of our discussions with Rusty and the vendors when we were putting together the design for the screening. Um, our vendor from, from Tremco was there to make sure that the connections were appropriate. They'll also be on site during the time uh, when these are being put up and we will put them as part of our roofing contract. Thank you. So um, just very briefly, I know one of the topics that we talked about <clears throat> in the early stages was the warranty of the roof itself, which obviously was important, and there was discussion about the weight-bearing capacity of potential screening. I know you addressed in here in the content, Rusty, that that has been discussed. Could you just hopefully very simply, not in great detail, but just overview how we have interfaced with the screening uh, manufacturer, installer, and obviously the general contractor here, and the roofing warranty, how is that being addressed so that we have complete assurance that the warranty is not being placed in any peril or that there might be something done that could potentially uh, void the warranty as it sits today? So we started with the, the process of making sure that the warranty on the roof would not be impacted. It's a Sarnfield roof. Uh, the installer uh, of the screens is actually also the, uh, the contractor that installed the roofs. Uh, so they, there's going to be a, a seamless warranty, and we are getting that warranty from them. Again, it's, it'll be reviewed by Sarnifo, and it's the same installer who installed the main roof. So there's, there's no one to point fingers at but the, the one individual. We met with the, the roofing company, with the panel company, my engineers, myself. We all met in this process to make sure that the, and we understood what the loads were uh, because the engineer didn't know what type of uh, load capacity uh, the, is transferred from the panels onto the roof structure. That was a, a major concern for us because 
this is a 1950s building, and, and you want to be sure that the structure that was in place uh, would be capable of handling some of the loads, the lateral loads that would be coming from the panels into the, onto the building. Uh, in fact, at one point we were hoping to look at screens that were maybe a, a 12 foot tall screen. Uh, we knew that we could do a certain uh, you know, height on it. Um, and we ended up having to compromise a little bit because the structural analysis, analysis indicated that a screen that's more in the 10 foot six range would be appropriate without having to further beef up the existing roof structure because that's a cost we didn't want to incur. Um, and that's why, it's, I don't know if you saw some of the pictures, we had some individuals up there on the roof sort of trying to define where the top of that screen would be. That was the purpose of that, that exercise so that we could you know, get a pretty good idea of the height of the screen. Thank you, Rusty. Appreciate that. I think that's important for um, our community to know as well. Just and on that point of the design, um, one of the things is the the actual screens themselves are raised off the roof for obviously snow and and and, and all of that purposes. But it, was it 18 inches or uh, two feet above? By code, we had to be a minimum of 20 inches. Okay. Uh, we're holding a 24 inch line, but the roof is tapered, so it goes up and down. Uh, but the minimum of 20 inches will be maintained okay. uh, for, for snow drift purposes. All right, and are they angled a little? Was, was that the? Uh... No, the, the screens will be uh, ex uh, okay. you know, level all the way across. It's the roof itself that has a, a, a slope to it. Fair enough. Mike Rowe. Thank you, Rusty. Uh, two questions. Uh, first, is the, or maybe Christine, um, the, Two hundred and twenty thousand dollars for today. Does that include, or is that on top of the thirty-six thousand we um, allocated in March for the design work? It's on top of. Okay. In addition to. And the thirty-six thousand that included the landscape design or. The design, yes. Right. But not the actual. Okay. Land so. I think that also included uh, land use approvals. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So over 250,000 for the screening noise barrier which I hope this screening does I mean everybody's talking about the visual effects of coming in or seeing it from the sight line at Wolcott Hill but more importantly um, for at least the dozen or so residents in the immediate area does this have a sound deadening capability to it what we discovered is that the sound was not coming from the rooftop units, but rather it was coming from the exhausts that are used for the fume hoods that are part of the science program. Okay. Um, two of the three can be turned off, uh, but one of them is serving prep rooms, and those have to be by code B24-7. Uh, so what we did is there's a 20-foot section of the panels that are specifically designed for sound absorption. Oh, okay. So that's that's the approach to how we're going to, and and these units are the, the these panels are going to be taller than that than those uh, exhaust units, okay, um, which will help matters as well. Great, thank you. Other questions from council, Amy. What's <clears throat> the time frame for the installation? When will this be done? We actually have. Uh, uh, allowed the contractor to move forward with the shop drawing phase. Uh, if all goes well and this is approved, we will then be looking at uh, delivery of materials in June uh, with the idea that as soon as school's out, they'll, they'll start some work then. Uh, and the panels, the panels are coming from, from one manufacturer, the, uh, the frames from another, but all the materials will be on site towards the end of June. Uh, and the installation is anticipated to take about five weeks. Thank you. All good? Thank you. Thank you for the effort on all of this. Christine, I know you had to go through a few meetings and we shook it up a little, but uh, I like the end result, of course, and I think the screening depictions look very appealing. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you. Good luck. Approval of minutes. First uh, motion to approve the minutes of the April 3rd, 2017 meeting. Second. Any changes, deletions? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Same. Thank you. Uh, the meeting of April 8th. Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of April 8th, 2017. Second. Any changes, deletions on that? That's the budget workshop. Um, I don't, the only concern I had in, you know, the registrar of voters was um, only, where was it? Camille was the only one there. Yes. Uh, but um, Councilor Hurley did abstain or, you know, make it, okay. at least have it reflect that he uh, uh, recused himself at least at that moment. Sure. For any possible conflict. Very good. Okay. I was just Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And we had the special meeting of March 20th. I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of March 20th, 2017. A second. Any changes or deletions there? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? And finally, the, uh, <coughs> the meeting of uh, April 17th, the budget public hearing. Uh, motion to approve the meeting minutes of April 17th. Second. Changes, deletions there, folks? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Thank you. Public comment? Anybody that did not get a chance to speak, Tom, come back up. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill. Just a quick comment about the Stillman roof. I know a few months back, uh, Mr. Bush said that the roof was shot. And I understand you have the uh, roofing contract with Tremco, I believe. And I don't know if that building's covered under that. But it is a slate roof, and it's pretty highly specialized. I, unfortunately, I have a slate roof on my house. It's not like an asphalt roof. It requires lots of maintenance actually twice a year. They have to get up there, check for loose slate, crack slate, whatever. Um, so I'm wondering if Tremco had uh, people that were qualified to determine that that roof needed to be replaced. The slate roofs typically last two to 400 years. So um, I think you should possibly look at that if you need to you get an expert in the slate business and have them survey the roof and advise the town accordingly um, I know they had some slate fall off the roof and it's a it's a problem ongoing problem with uh, you know old churches and whatnot that have slate roofs there are systems to uh, catch any slate that uh, does break loose and uh, I would think that's going to be a costly uh, job to replace that roof. I'm sure you're not going to put slate back on it. That uh, would cost the absolute fortune. But uh, I think you should talk to Tremco and just get some assurance that they've had people that are qualified uh, to evaluate the roof uh, before we go spend a lot of money replacing the roof. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Other public comment? Yes, please. All right, Kevin Tedesco, 34 Ireland Road. Um, just a quick, um, put something on your guys' radar. There's a community connectivity program at the state of Connecticut, uh, Department of Transportation. Um, just to put that on the radar, um, you guys didn't apply for the first round, um, but there are construction funds that are coming up in the next round, uh, hopefully by September. Um, it's gonna be a grant program uh, up to 400,000 for, um, infrastructure projects that will get you bicycle or pedestrian related amenities. Um, could be anything from signals, road resurfacing. Um, there's a, a wide range. So just uh, put that out there. Thank you very much. Casey. Casey White, 91 Center Street. Um, that program sounds great, let's do it. I was actually just about to comment on how I like um, the expanded island on State and Hartford and not the intersection by the farmer's market. Um, that's great for pedestrians, it's unused road space. So I'm really happy the town um, expanded the island. And um, 
I really love that Wethersfield is a walkable town, so anything that the town can do to make small improvements to pedestrians, cyclists also, um, I think will really add value to the town and is one reason why I chose to move here um, because so many towns in the Hartford area are not really walkable, um, you know, at least beyond like a small block of a downtown area. Um, I would love to have a crossing lock in front of the post office. Um, there is none and um, I have, walked it with a stroller before and I, you know, it's not, it wouldn't be a great situation for someone who's not extremely mobile. So um, that's my pedestrian comment for the night. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Other, yep. I'm um, Ira Collins, 9 Avalon Place, and I'm just here to show my support for Board of Education budget and I, encourage you to accept it without cut or you know smallest tiniest possible cut um, and I just feel fresh to Wethersfield and Connecticut I think school and library are what makes a town great um, so that's all thank, thank you, you. Hi everyone, I'm Deborah Cohen, 73 Church Street. I just want to echo the sentiment that um, the budget for our schools needs to be kept as high as possible. Um, our kids are our greatest resource. And if we let them down, we're letting everybody everybody down. I say that as um, a senior citizen and I say that as somebody who does not have children. So it's not like I've got a personal stake in this. Well, thank you, Mike. <laughs> um, so I just want to put that thought out there. Thank you. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. As I was saying earlier about uh, the sports and the revenues, when we had Catone Field up here 14 years ago, it was we were going to get this, we were, we were going to get this turf on there, we were going to make money, this was going to, great things were going to happen in our community. And I don't really see it happening, Mayor. As I look at the records, the dollar amounts look poor, and it doesn't appear. When you look at the, the dollars, and you know what they're charging to get in, I think it's two bucks for kids and five bucks for adults. When you start looking at this, there's not a lot of people going. There might be a couple games when there's an overload. Otherwise, there's not a great support in this town, when you look at the revenues, and I really believe for years we've been supporting something that is nothing else but a drag on us. I know you don't like hearing that, but it is. I've asked the town manager three a month ago to provide me with uh, information regarding uh, uh, all the usage of these fields, and I still haven't received it. I don't know why. He tells me he doesn't have enough help. I don't. It's an Excel spreadsheet or some kind of a, Hi, some kind of a spreadsheet if Why someone's keeping it up. And if nobody's keeping it up, then you've got a problem. And if you don't, it should be readily available. You want what you want when you want it in a fashion you want it in, and it's not how we do it. What fashion is it in? It's in a munis fashion. Give it to me in a... In a in a, in a, in a um, what do they call it? Uh, I can convert it. And we won't have any information for what the Board of Ed collects for their programs. All we have is town programs. I want your town. I know you do. And I responded to your email this morning. Thank you. I haven't turned my email on Maybe today. I leave work. I leave for work early in the morning, and I just got home. Okay? You bet. But the fact is, we have losers. We also have other losers in this town, Mayor. And I've talked about this in the past. We have the Standish House, a house that we collect $100 a year for. And some group who pays the $100 a year rakes in what, 40 some, million, 40 some thousand dollars a year. Plus we take care of 
any cost over $3,000 that they have to put up, from what I recall from the agreements. We also take care of the lawns. We take care of the snow. We take care of any repairs. Of, we take care of roofing. You, you have in the budget, you have in the budget to paint and scrape $25,000 for the, for, for the um, Standish House. You also have a, I don't know if you ever decided what that $452,000 generator was. Typographical error. Yeah, you did say that the other uh, two weeks ago, but I thought you would have found out where it really belonged. You mean it was in there, and you have to zero it out? Yeah, we're going to zero it out when you see the published budget. Okay, good. Glad we caught it. But the fact remains, we have losers in this town that we should be looking at and, and getting rid of. I believe the Standish House for one. We should give it back to the Standish family and let them worry about it. We should look at the Kinney Center and do something with that. We want a room down there. We pay X amount of dollars for a room at the Kinney Center from what I've seen in some of these records. Yeah, we own it. We get $100 a year. We take a hell of a slap across the face because of earlier deals. You should sell it to those people who are in there. Let them become taxpayers and owners and and let them take care of the property. Why should we? And that goes with the Standish House as well. That goes with that little academy down there. Sell it to those people who are using it. Sell it to them for fair market <clears throat> value, not, not give away stuff like you normally do. $100 a year rent. Incredible, incredible. Anyway, I hope that you folks will consider reducing the Board of Education's budget. I've looked at that more than once. I think you have a lot of items in there that you can reduce it by. And we should reduce big time. Because all these years, there's been no reductions. They've been increases. And look where we are today. Look at the condition of the state of Connecticut. Look at, it ripples right down here, Mayor. And you come and you talk and put up a budget for six point some percent increase. I mean, who in, this, who in this time would do such a thing? Oh, I know, you have all kinds of fixed costs. Fixed costs that you promote. Fixed costs that you go out and borrow more money and they become fixed cost. We don't get to vote on those smaller deals. Oh yeah, we get to come up here, but your minds are already made up. The citizens should really know how bad this is. And it's not party, one party versus another. It's both party. The party is the worst thing we have in the state of Connecticut. We shouldn't have party. People should be on their own if they're in politics. That makes them more accountable. Here, doesn't work. But anyway, Mayor, I... Uh, Wish you well on coming up with a new budget. I hope it's less than zero. 10% less would be nice. We've been hammered year after year. And it can't continue. It just can't, Mayor. You know, you, I understand you're supposed to be a businessman. I mean, is this how you would run a business? Thank you very much. Thank you. Other public comments? Seeing none, we, uh, I'm going to get a motion to adjourn and recess to a budget workshop with members of the board. Motion to adjourn and recess to a budget workshop. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Where are we going to start? We're going to go in there. Oh. Oh, you got slate roof too? Yeah.